So what accounts for this improvement in delivering evidence-based treatments? Well, one element is accreditation and that makes a difference. From a 2011 study, accredited hospitals consistently outperformed non-accredited hospitals on 16 core measures. Accredited hospitals also had better performance at baseline, and this improvement was sustained and increased over time. The Joint Commission hypothesizes that these factors have helped make accountability measures work. So what makes for a good accountability measure? First of all, you have to measure what works, not what doesn't work. So you need to rely upon those interventions where the evidence is strong, both in quality and magnitude, because these are the ones that make a difference. Second, we need standardized definitions. Prior to 2002, although the Joint Commission used OREX, everyone could develop their own standard definition and so uh, we weren't measuring the same thing and that makes comparisons very difficult. Thirdly, collecting and reporting the measurement just once to a central agency or organization certainly improves efficiency and the quality of the measurement. All of that packs a punch with measurement and using it for accountability, for payment and accreditation is what's making a difference. I mentioned earlier that being evidence-based about everything includes, includes using evidence to generate what and how to measure quality and effectiveness. So it isn't just about using evidence to inform what we should do, but also using evidence to inform how we get it into practice and using evidence to inform the outcomes and how we measure those outcomes. So when it comes to constructing accountability measures or any other type of measurement for that matter meant to improve quality and safety, the leaders of the Joint Commission advise that these four criteria be met. First, there needs to be a strong evidence base that shows that the care practices leads to improved outcomes. And this shouldn't be based on a single study, rather meta-analyses with strong effect size. Second, the measure needs to accurately capture whether or not the evidence-based process has in fact been provided. Checkboxes do not necessarily mean that the process was delivered effectively. I know we rely a lot on checkboxes, but these folks at the Joint Commission understand that sometimes that doesn't mean that a treatment has actually been effective. So for example, if we just check off that heart failure teaching has been provided, it doesn't mean that the patient understands or is able to use those instructions when they go home. The measure needs to address the, a process that has few intervening steps between what must occur before the improved outcome happens. In other words, when you what you measure needs to be downstream to the outcome rather than upstream. So for example, if we measure whether or not a diagnostic test was done, there's a lot of subsequent steps that providers need to take before an effective outcome will happen. Implementing the measure should not induce unintended consequences. For example, giving an antibiotic to uh, folks that arrive at the emergency room with a suspected community-acquired pneumonia m could lead to overdiagnosis and overuse of antibiotics just because we're trying so hard to meet that measure. And so it's, diff it's difficult sometimes to anticipate what those unintended consequences might be.